Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma. I'm Kizma and today's episode is all about the secret to positive thinking. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Well, hello there, Nick. What's going on? Some kind of weird stuff, to be honest. (laughs) It's the perfect day to record the episode about the secret to positive thinking. Yeah. Yeah. The perfect day. It is the actual perfect day. Because it's been like, it's been a very fascinating day for both of us. Yeah. And leading up to it, some other things, you know, I've had some things like Mm -hmm. my my laptop. It exploded nearly. (laughs) That would have been cool. But (laughs) no, but it did. Like Mission Impossible. Like, and then all of a sudden smoke starts coming out. Smoke. That would have been weird, but cool. Yeah. Uh, and it just, uh, just stopped. Like, and I took it into the Apple store and they were, they were like, yeah, we've, I've only ever seen one do this, you know, in, in my 11 years working here, which yeah, is weird. So there should have been smoke. It would have been cooler. So there was that. I just got it back today though. We redid the settings. So, uh-huh. you know, there's that Recording. going on. And then today there was just, yeah, it was just all kinds so, of So yeah, just, it, it is a perfect day to record this episode, everyone. Here's how the day started. We, our furnace has not worked for months and we're in San Diego. So yeah, it's been a year. And so usually like San Diego, like we don't need a furnace until it hit like 40 and we're like, Chip, our landlord, it's time for a furnace. Like we have a hot water bottle. During the day, it's fine. It's it's during the night. But I like sleeping during the cold. So we have hot water bottles. And I got that infrared heater when Zoe was home, which works quite well. But the 40s is quite cold. The 40s, it's chilly. So in, in Chip's like, okay, someone's coming over today at 9 a.m. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Oh, that's why it all started funky. So <laughs> I'm up. Uh, trying to like do my stuff at 6 a.m. So I'm prepared by eight, but there's the dog and there's the cat. And then somebody just messaged me. I didn't get a room for the retreat next week, which is a whole nother, like I'm leading my ashram to Tucson for the soul abundance retreat. And so I'm, I'm dove into my computer before I should have, because I really wanted to get her a room and it worked out. And anyways, then, you know, doing the salt bath that we do and the doorbell rings, I hear Lenny barking. I'm like, they're at the door and I'm in the salt bath. Nick's in the other salt bath. We're lucky we have two bathtubs. I'm like, okay. So I totally like get all dried up and and just try not to look at like that dork on TV that opens the door in their robe. At least you didn't have the hair rollers in. I didn't have the hair rollers in. (laughs) And he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I was like, come on in. Like, let's get the party started. So they're super cool guys. They come in, they've got the cloth and and they go up in our furnace is it's a two level condo. And then way at the top of like what, like on top of the closet is the door to the furnace. So the furnace isn't just upstairs. It's like, way up there. You can't get to it without a ladder. Yeah. You need a big ladder to get yeah. to it. Very odd. Yeah. That is weird. It's actually. There. So then yeah. they have to hoist this big furnace down and take it downstairs, two flights of stairs, and then another flight outside. And so, and I'm just like, by then I'm like, okay, I, I got my coffee. I made them coffee. You had coffee. I'm going to dive into some things I need to get done before I got to the office to kick off the day. And then we have no Wi-Fi. It's still out, by the way. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it'll be on by the time we get home, but um, but yeah, it, it, and that was I was looking forward. I had all these things on my list. I'm like chunk, chunk, chunk. I but I right. need the I need the internet for all of them, and I need my lap I need my laptop to be on the internet for all of them. None Nothing. Of it, none of it's working. And so it's a really interesting moment where one can start getting super upset. And I know these are like these are, you know, alone. These Definitely are not first big world deal. problems. First world problems. <laughs> Nothing to really complain about. But it's the attachment, right? It's the attachment. It's going to be this way. And then when it's not that way, it's very easy for the mind to dip 
into a whole lot of anxiety, agitation, and negativity. Right. And so I share this experience because it all it is all kind of funny. And we just ended up going our separate routes. And I was in a coffee shop for a while. Then we we're both in the office and we're getting other rooms and it all works out. Um, yet it's the attachment to it having to be a certain way. And so the real secret to positive thinking is to not be attached to things having to be a certain way, because the moment that it's got to be that way and it isn't, we feel out of sync if we don't have that intellect to check us. Yeah. I was thinking about this this throughout today. I've discovered a new group. You know, I I go searching on Facebook to find groups just to kind of hang out and see what people are talking about. Stalker. Stalker. Oh, no, no. I contribute. (laughs) I definitely contribute. I don't do that. Well, the reason I'm doing is because I'm curious, like what people are Mm -hmm. talking about in the healing world and things like that. I found an empath group, thousands and thousands and thousands of of people in this group. And I got to tell you, like, there's so many posts in there who are like, I'm feeling super emotional around the full moon. Anybody else feeling this way? Oh, and everyone jumps on because it's an excuse. Everybody jumps on and starts feeding it. So it's like, and I was analyzing this and I was looking at, I actually wrote a post on it about the law of polarity, Mm -hmm. but, um, and, and they, they published it too, which is cool because it's like, you know, you got to get your post approved and everything like that. But I thought, okay, well, here's a place where I can shed a little bit of light. Hopefully this will be helpful to somebody. And I talked about it, but what I saw as I started to analyze this is, okay, somebody's feeling a certain way. And rather than looking at what's, you know, what may be going on inside of them or, or really utilizing tools and skills to be able to solve Mm -hmm. that, the mind Mm -hmm. goes and looks to build a case, build a big fat case. And what does it do? It uses other people to do that. So it goes and finds other people, anybody else feeling this way. And then you've got like hundreds of comments of people like, oh, it's this and it's that. And I feel this way all the time and I can't (laughs) stop crying. Like all these things. And there's, I'm reading through and I'm like, wow, like this is fascinating, man. Like triangulating with the moon. (laughs) Not, I mean, I mean, triangulating, but beyond triangulating, it's like more angles than you could possibly imagine because they're drawing all of these people into this same conversation and everybody's just piling on it. So, you know, you know, and that's, that's how people get stuck into that certain way of being, right? Mm -hmm. You talk about positive thinking. Well, that's how people get stuck in their negative thinking. The mind has to, you know, the mind sees something or feels something the way that it is and it looks for that justification. Then it enrolls everybody around them into that conversation or it tries to. Right. Right. Fascinating. It is fascinating. And not to dismiss, there is planetary technology. The moon's got some incredible energy that happens. Yet, it's not to be used as an excuse to build upon why the emotions are really happening. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you feel what you're feeling, but you know, if you're, if you're crying uncontrolled, like you have, you lack emotional control or something's going on that you need support. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's all there is Deeper to Deeper support. And right. what is that attachment? Right. It's attachment. Everyone, it's, it always comes down to being attached So the other thing that can happen is, you know, when we're creating something, when we have goals, when we have relationship goals, whatever it is, and it doesn't work the way we want, it's because we're attached to a certain outcome. Where we want to be really cautious is that when that doesn't happen, especially when we're working with another person, team, intimate, children, when the outcome doesn't happen just like we want, what is our go-to? Is our go-to to make them wrong? Is our go-to to make ourselves wrong? Is it to accept it fully and be like, okay, this is who they are. This is how they're being. What can I do to support? We just have to look at that initial reaction and that will determine your fastest, um, I would call it like the common denominator that you react when something is not going like you want with another person. Does that make sense to you, Nick? Yeah, it does. The, it's, I've heard it said this one Probably way. more simply than I just blurted out. No, no, it was, that was beautiful. Um, there's a lot there, actually, like a lot in what you just mm-hmm. said. Um, one of the things that I've heard time and time again, lower your expectations, like just don't have expectations of people. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's fair and yeah, I don't I, think I don't that's like right. I that one either. You know, because I think that it's just you you're playing to the least common denominator. Yes. And it's like, okay, well, if this is this person behaves as anything more than an animal, then I'm like not going to be disappointed. And I don't right. think that's the way that we want to go. It it's not the expectations that are the problem. It's the attachment 
Right. That is the real problem. The attachment is attached, the real problem. Attached to it being a certain way and them being a certain way. You know, hold a, hold a high. And that's where a lot of people get stuck in themselves mm-hmm. is because they hold this ridiculously high standard for themselves, which is fine. Go for it. Like, mm-hmm. be the Christ walking the earth. Be mm-hmm. the Buddha. But at the same time is, is when you're attached right. to that expectation now you have a problem with perfectionism. You're going to have a problem with authenticity because you're not going to feel safe on mm-hmm. uh, just revealing who you really are and just mm-hmm. being yourself in the world. And you're always going to be trying to be something different because it's not going to feel right to do that. All because of the attachment to that expectation. Exactly. It's not the expectation at all. Expect the best of yourself and expect the best of those people around you because somebody's got to hold the bar. Yeah, somebody has to hold the bar. And it also allows you to speak to and see the potential And if you have a team, if you have a business and people are working for you, be willing to let them know what your expectations are. The challenge is when we get attached to it, we can then no longer operate from a neutral and objective mindset and emotion set because we're agitated. And then of course, I mean, a whole nother episode is if people aren't performing, you got to look at who are the people or how are you as a leader? Yeah. Right. But are there consequences for not performing? For sure. For yeah. sure. But yeah, that, that piece of expecting the best and, and calling or speaking, seeing the best in people is a beautiful thing. Yet if they don't show up that way and you're attached, it leads to really a, a spiral down very quickly. Right. Mm-hmm. And that leads to another part of this, expect for the best, prepare for the worst. Mm-hmm. Interesting though, because... Only the mental is is on the expectation of the best. Your actual actions and mm-hmm. everything else and all the strategizing is preparing for the worst. Mm-hmm. So the bulk of your effort and energy goes to preparing for the worst. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Man, like, what do you think? You, well, you're going to land somewhere in the middle of that, mm-hmm. you know, which is mm-hmm. but likely, you know. I don't know. I'm a believer if you prepare for the best, it means you're in such great shape. You can handle when something goes wrong. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not certainly not what we're saying. And I hope our listeners know this about us by now is we're not saying be delusional. Yeah, it's not delusional. It's not magical thinking. Yeah. And just happy, happy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's all going to be fine when, you know, everything's crumbling around you. Like you have to take actions. And mm-hmm. if you see problems or things that really need to shift, you're, it's on you to to right. take action on that and do right. something. But think about what does it mean to prepare for the best? What does it mean to have positive mindset? It means you have an intellect that's in place. So you're discerning, you're assessing. It means that you're able to govern your emotions, direct your emotions higher or do something to support yourself. It means that you are a great communicator or working to be so. And that to me is preparing for the best. So when you're that person and something goes wrong, you're going to be skilled to handle it. Mm -hmm. And failure, you know, I think it was, it was Napoleon Hill or Wallace D. Waddles. I think it was Wallace D. Waddles that said, it's not, it's not about failure. It's about submitting to failure. Mm. When we submit to it and we let it take us down, then, then it's one. Otherwise failure is just another way to be better. That's the attachment Mm -hmm. takes you when it's, when it takes you down. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I hadn't put that together that way. So the secret to positive thinking is to be, is to let go of attachment, to be unattached. Now, how do we do that one? To be unattached? Yeah. Oh, man. That's the deeper, right? That's the, that's Mm -hmm. the underneath. So I'll just start off by saying it's an acute awareness. The, the spirituality in us allows us to be aware of every experience we're in. And when we are aware of it, we will feel, we'll sense, we'll know when we start to get triggered. If something is upsetting to us, if something isn't working like we want, and all of a sudden, instead of a positive or at least a neutral, I feel like neutral is even more powerful than a positive mindset, we dip into the negative. If we're acutely aware of that moment, we have an opportunity to pause. And I feel like the pause is the next step to being unattached because in that pause, like, wait a minute, I have a couple choices. I can respond like I always have based on past experiences, based on agitation, based on attachment, or I can take a breath and decide to respond differently. And that's, that's a split second of a choice. I can respond the old way or from my feelings, from my 
beliefs or what someone's put on me, or I can respond differently in a higher way. That's to me, the beginning of being less attached. Yeah. It's making a choice, like making it, it's a choice. Giving, it's giving yourself mm-hmm. the opportunity to make a choice. Well, I think about it. I think about it in terms of, all right, well, what's happening here? You know, energetically, there's, there's the tether to it, you mm-hmm. know, and there's this thought flow that's running towards a certain way that we really want it to be, you know, and, and mm-hmm. all the meaning that we put around that, you know, right. I'm a failure or it, you know, mm-hmm. there's something wrong with me or this frustrating or the world is out to get me or things just aren't going my way or whatever those ideas and beliefs are that we build around that attachment, right? right? That helps to hold it there. And I think, okay, well, you know, if we really want to solve this, what you're describing is objectivity. Mm-hmm. Objectivity is what gives us the ability to observe our thoughts and our emotions from that objective place and say, hey, is that really where the, do I really want to go down that path? Right. Or do I want to maybe choose a different path? That's, you're, and you're giving yourself that choice point. You're getting, allowing yourself to make it from a more objective place than the level of thought, trying to think, think, think your way through. We call that the thinky, thinky, right. hashtag thinky, thinky. <laughs> Uh, or the emotional, mm-hmm. which is so powerful, right? And pulls us in so many different, like when you, when emotion rises in you, it's like that emotion will get you, you know, if you're not right. really mindful of it and you'll right. just, you know, um, whatever it might be. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and that's, that's, that can go either way, you know, and oftentimes not in a great way because right? then we're not in a controlled state. We're not really managing how we're, we're not discerning, we're not discerning mm-hmm. or managing how we're, how mm-hmm. we're expressing ourselves. Right. Right. And so the, then, and then it's the other person. It's on the other person to say like, oh, wow, this person's really upset. I wonder what's up here. You know, mm-hmm. now, now, now it's on them to be objective. Yeah. And if they're not objective, then you have a huge then argument you have a Shakespeare on. play. So, so that makes me think, hmm, like, I wonder why, why don't people have that? Like, what are the impediments to that, that level of objectivity? That's the attachment, right? That we're talking about. Well, well so if we're going to solve it, we need to kind of break it down. And, and I think energetically, people don't take care of their energy. Mm-hmm. They get, you know, now everybody gets hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Like they right. go through those cycles. If you it's very to... challenging to be unattached when we're hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Yeah. I mean, think about, think about when you're tired when you're really like you sit down, OK, maybe you're going to sit down and watch, you know, something on TV or mm-hmm. something on your computer for for a few minutes while you eat your lunch. OK, great. Right. If you're feeling really good and then you're done with your lunch and you turn it off. Right. If you're tired, <laughs> you don't turn it off. It's super easy to get sucked in. It's right. so much easier to get sucked in. That's just your mind being kind of fatigued. Right. And in a, in your your mind and energy is in a more tired state. And it's just like super sub- susceptible to those sorts of things. They're like, okay, uh, next next piece of clickbait, you know, right. click the next thing. And all of a sudden you're way down a rabbit hole. Right. So it's managing ourselves to be in a state of awareness, right? right. Hungry, angry, lonely. And tired. That's an energetic thing, right? Right. And so the energetic, the energy when it's not managed and cleaned, it gets really foggy around people, right? It's it it gets really confusing. Makes stories, lots of stories in the head, absolutely, lots of assumptions, right? And mm-hmm. then the frustration and the emotions mm-hmm. around it is actually exhausting. Yeah, like that, you feel really tired after a lot of that. And so then it compromises your ability and you get sucked deeper and deeper into it. I feel like the there the two things that are absolutely key is one is managing your energy, keeping it clean and clear and really treating it like you would brushing your teeth. Mm-hmm. Right? If people took their energy that seriously, th- we would be living in a very, very different world. And life would be a lot easier. Right. But it's an unseen thing. It's you an can, unseen, you can see tangible. your teeth, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. can see your teeth, you know, you, you know, when, yeah. when something's off there, but, but you can't see your energy. Most people can't see their energy. Yeah. They can feel it though. They can feel it, but they don't know what they're feeling. Right. So let's create two steps. One is the pause. Pause. Yeah. The pause is really powerful. Give a step on the energy. What can people do for their energy? Cut your cords. Cut cords. Describe how they cut cords. Well, I'll put a link. I have a thing. Okay. Yeah. I I have a, I made. Look on the show notes. Yeah. You'll see Nick's videos, cut your cords. Yeah. It's an ancient technique. um, And there's a way to do it. That's the right way. 
when it's done the right way, it's very powerful. The effective way. The effective way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's lots of different techniques over there. And most people I hear, they say, oh, I know how to cut my cords. Right. But cool. Like, are you doing it? Yeah. And is what you're doing truly effective? Yeah. So, so important. And this this is this works around that in a very fast and, and clear way. Right. So definitely grab those because that's how you deal with the energy. And then the third part to gaining objectivity is ultimately your own self-study. Right. Studying is so important. Right. Like, who are you? Are you your thoughts? Right. Are you your emotions? Yeah. It's back to the the spiritual scripture, back to the book. I recommend The Fall of the Human Intellect by Swami Partisarity. That's a great book. If you really want to understand attachment, Holocaust of Attachment. Yeah, that's another yeah. great one. Fall of the Human Intellect is, is just the most awesome mainstay yeah. as far as here's how to be a human being. Right. Right. And here's how to be more objective in your, in your world. It's basically like the Bajagovindam of, you know, modern day literature on this kind of stuff. Yeah. Not that anybody would know what, <laughs> did, trust me, listener, you, you have no obligation to know what the Bajagovindam <laughs> is. That's a super obscure text. Right. But, um, but it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a version for every day, right. That, that is really easy to understand that helps to gain objectivity. Right. Swami Parthasarathi's uh We'll put the links teachings. in the show notes as well. Fall of the human intellect, um, holocaust of attachment. Yeah. Cut your cords. Cut your and cords. everyone take a big fat pause. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you really want to maintain, whether it's positive thinking, objectivity, let's just call it, you want to be able to think about what you want, not what you don't want. Take the pause and be less attached. Life is, will feel so much more free without that attachment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the illuminated thought, very basic, the secret to positive thinking is to be less attached. That's it. Work on it, everyone. It's worth it. It's a lifetime of work, but it is so worth it. Namaste. Peace. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.